Ladies and gentlemen, I am an energy warrior. Now, I had a lot of trouble saying that the first couple of times. Because being a soldier for 31 years, you're not taught those kind of things. You know, we think of energy and we think of Al Gore and we think of, you know, environmentalists and tree huggers and whatnot, and not that there's anything wrong with that. But David, I'm a soldier. I'm not an energy advocate. I'm an, not an energy warrior. Well, let me tell you a little bit about how I became one and, then I, and how I came to realize that there's a direct impact between how we use our energy and how many soldiers die on the battlefield. And I can't imagine anything more serious than that. I became an energy warrior when I was working for General Petraeus. I was a senior logistician for 15 glorious months back in August uh, 06 to 07, to the end of 07. And one day, uh, General Petraeus looked at me and said, Anderson, how do we get trucks off the road? We're getting kids killed every day out there. How do we do that? And I said, Roger Boss, let me look at it. Let me think about it. I'll come back to you with some answers. And I anal analyzed the situation. At that time, about 1,000 trucks a day it took to sustain operations. 1,000 trucks supporting war effort in Iraq. And of those 1,000 trucks, perhaps 40% of them, 400 or so, were doing nothing but moving fuel. And I said, well, doggone it. Why do we need so much fuel? My, my guys came back to me and said, Boss, it's not because we're driving a lot of trucks or tanks or flying a lot of helicopter. It's because we are air conditioning the desert. And that's the honest to God truth. And so I'm going to talk you through a little bit about that. Some considerations for why fuel is so incredibly important and why it is so difficult and expensive in a, in a war environment. Number one, it's incredibly dangerous. Perhaps the most dangerous job in the world is driving a fuel truck in Iraq or Afghanistan. Over a thousand Americans, a thousand, have died supporting fuel missions. And again, I can't think of anything that would make you more of an energy warrior than just that fact alone. A thousand Americans moving fuel. When you think about a fuel truck rolling down the road, it's just a big target. We call it Taliban targets in Afghanistan. Every time they can blow up a truck, it's a great photo op, and they can go back to the people, the Iranians or the Saudis or whoever, are funding their activities and say, give us more money to build more bombs to kill Americans. So where is all that fuel going? Like I said, General Petraeus said, get the trucks off the road. And I, and, and I said, said, 400 trucks or so a day are moving fuel. How much of that fuel is actually going to air, air conditioning? Well, about 65%. Power generation, a tremendous percentage, huge number, is going to do nothing but provide the electrical energy that drives air conditioning. And people might say, well, OK, well, let's stop air conditioning. Well, that's not the case, folks. It's 125 degrees out there. Let me tell you, you can't get anything done. You can't sleep. You can't eat. You can't do your job. You can't work in a headquarters environment when it's that hot. I'm just, that's just the way it is. But look at that, ladies and gentlemen. We have tents. We have tents over there. We're air conditioning tents. Does that make sense? How much does this cost us? And this is what really is going to hurt you when you think about the incredible cost that's associated with air conditioning inefficient structures in Iraq and Afghanistan. $20 billion. Thank you very much, Mr. and Mrs. Taxpayer. $20 billion. Now, Americans should be really outraged to hear that. $20 billion. Think of what we could do with that. Think of what that kind of money the good that that could go in terms of education, in terms of science and technological developments back here in the United States, a host of social issues could be addressed. If we were to, do, if we were to just take a chunk out of that, sure, we're not going to make it all go away. But what if we made a 20, 35 percent increase in efficiency in that regard? That, we're talking five, six, eight billion dollars. That's more than the entire U.S. solar industry, five billion dollars. So how do you attack that problem? You'd reduce demand, of course, because at the top of that pyramid is air conditioning requirement. And under that, in order to provide that air conditioning, there's a huge infrastructure, the electrical power, the fuel and handling to get to, to generate the electrical power, all the maintenance personnel that provide maintenance for the equipment that provides the power. So here's a novel concept insulate our structures. 
It's a no-brainer, right? We can insulate our structures. Closed cell spray polyurethane foam. Walk outside this room out here and hang a left. And there's a bunch of structures back here in the corner of this museum that advocate the use of closed cell spray polyurethane foam. And here's a piece of it right here. A light foam that you spray on the fabric of, of canvas, on tent. It sticks to it and it improves the efficiency of that structure by 92%. Okay, so we did that. When I was over there, I came back to General Petraeus and said, boss, this is what we need to do. We need to start using this closed cell spray of poly polyurethane foam and start insulating our structures. And we did an initial operational test at Fort Benning. It was a big success. 92% reduction in efficiency requirement. We did another one. We did, this is at Camp Victory in Baghdad. That's the gymnasium at Camp Victory. The temperatures went from 91 degrees to 73 degrees. We cut the energy requirement by 75%. Like I said, an absolute no-brainer. I was able to get, when I was over there in uh, June of 2007, a $95 million contract. A $95 million contract to provide spray foam insulation that is now generating a billion dollars, with a B, a billion dollars a year in cost avoidance and taking 11,000 trucks off the road. That's saving a lot of lives. And then we'd be able to remission other assets that are presently being used on fuel convoys and we'd be able to take them uh, use them in the fight to win the hearts and minds of the Afghan or Iraqi people, which is exactly what General Petraeus would like us to do. And it all gets down to this, ladies and gentlemen. Energy efficiency equals military effectiveness. And that's why I became an energy warrior, because I finally came to an understanding that that's what that means. You can be an energy efficient warrior and a better soldier. That's what this is all about. When you understand that, it'll actually help us to win the war faster, get our troops home sooner, save billions of dollars, and perhaps dozens, hundreds of lives. And we can learn things in Iraq and Afghanistan that we can bring back here to the United States and help defeat the greatest threat to our national security, which is our over-reliance on foreign oil. Thank you very much.